Here's our second molecule, IR and mass spec. We're going to begin by drawing a line at 1500. We're going to ignore everything to the right side of that line. We're going to look at um, to the left of 3000. We see that there are no special hydrogen atoms that are showing up in this molecule. In general, this IR looks pretty boring. We have a really normal carbon hydrogen peak which means that we probably don't have a benzene ring in the molecule. And then if we look over here, we see that we don't have a carbon-carbon double bond. So we definitely don't have a benzene ring. We also have no carbon-oxygen double bond showing up. It's uh, like I said, it's kind of a boring IR without a whole lot of information, but the lack of information is information in itself. We know that we don't have benzene. We know we don't have carbon oxygen double bond. We probably don't have, well, we don't have an OH group. We don't have oxygens at all in this molecule. And that's stuff that we'll use to help us figure out what we have. So let's go down to the mass spec. Um, of course, our eyes are immediately drawn to this really big peak here, but remember me telling you that the scale in a mass spec adjusts. So it would never just leave all this empty space out here. Uh, you always need to look all the way over here. Sometimes the peaks are just really tiny. Look at what we can see here. We have peaks that are the same height. That tells us that we have bromine in the molecule. It's not all the time that we're gonna see four peaks like this in our mass spec. When we do see that many peaks all the way on the side there with our mass spec, the one that is very furthest to the right is the one that we call the M plus two peak. And that means that this one right here is going to be our M plus peak. That's the one that we're gonna to use to get our molecular weight. So this is, uh, this is 125, so this is 130, this is 135, so this is 136. So our molecular weight is 136, and we know that we have bromine in the molecule. So let's go ahead and calculate our formula and our HDI. The molecular weight of 136, we wanna subtract the mass of the bromine, which is 79. 136 minus 79 gives us 57. That's the mass of the carbons and hydrogens. Divide that by 13 to get four carbon atoms. To come up with the number of hydrogen atoms, we go back to 136. We subtract the mass of the bromine. We subtract the mass of the four carbon atoms. 139 minus 79 minus 48 is... 139 minus 79, 136, that's my problem. 136 minus 79 minus 48 is nine hydrogen atoms. C for H9Br. And let's calculate our HDI. Four times two is eight, plus two is 10, minus the nine hydrogen and the one bromine is an HDI of zero. So no double bonds, uh, no rings, nothing like that. C4H9Br. Let's go look at our NMRs. C4H9Br with an HDI of zero. First thing we should always do is just double check that the number of hydrogen atoms are the same as what we came up with in our molecular formula, and they are. We have, uh, like, we really can't tell what the splitting is on these because it's really kind of smooshed together. But we can kind of see there's quite a bit of splitting for this guy right here. And there's either no splitting or very little splitting for these two. So we'll use that to help us out. I'm going to just begin by just drawing the equivalent hydrogen atoms. So we have uh, two equivalent hydrogen atoms right there. We have one equivalent hydrogen atom right here. And then we have six equivalent hydrogen atoms, which typically means that we have two methyl groups, symmetrical, like this. And now what I've drawn is one, two, three, four, five hydrogen atoms, or five carbon atoms, and we only have four. So that means I know that two of these five carbon atoms that I've drawn are actually duplicates of each other. We'll have to figure that much of it out. Let's look at our carbon NMR just to see how many types of hydrogens we have. We've got three peaks, three type or carbons, I mean, three, three peaks, three types of carbons. That's going to be consistent with this symmetry right here. So this is one type of carbon atom. This is definitely a second type of carbon atom. And then we've got like either 
either this carbon atom is this guy or this carbon atom is this guy, one or the other. So let's consider the possibility that it's this one. If this carbon atom is this guy right here, look what's happening when I place that in that molecule. We have propane, CH3, CH2, CH3, with no place to add that this carbon right here. There's no room for it. So if I put this guy right here, there's no empty bonds. There's nowhere to attach carbon number four or the bromine. So I definitely don't want to do that. This carbon atom is definitely the one that belongs in this position right here. I'm going to go ahead and stick it up there. I'll just stick that hydrogen right there. And I'm going to erase this one right here. And if we think, um, if we think a little bit about like what we see for the splitting, we see that this one hydrogen, this one hydrogen has a, quite a bit of splitting to it. And that would make sense because this one's going to be split by a lot. So once we get this um, set together, this is one, two, three. Here's our fourth carbon atom. We know that this carbon atom is going to attach in this position right there. So let's just go ahead and draw that in. And the last thing that we need to do is just add our bromine. And does this make sense in terms of chemical shift? Absolutely. These two hydrogen atoms are the ones that are the most deshielded, which is logical because they are the ones that the bromine is attached to. This molecule has one, two, three types of carbon NMR. So that's exactly what we saw. Three types of carbon atoms, which is what we saw in the carbon NMR. So this structure looks accurate.